which means we're live, of course. All right, so I'm gonna close my Unit 7 Index uh, page because I don't need that right now. I'm just gonna focus on the page that I currently have open, which is my 7.3 HTML. I'm gonna start this like we normally do, HTML5. And then I'm not gonna put anything in the body yet because 7.3 is almost entirely in JavaScript. Style sheets are optional. You don't need a style sheet for 7.3, but I'm gonna make one just so that I have that Zelda link practice. Um, right, uh, right after I give my document a title, B Blakeney P1 7.3. Okay, then I'm gonna right click on my style subfolder and go new file. I'm gonna go a little bit faster since this is stuff we've been doing style.css, so I have my 7.3 style.css, and the more important folder, or the more important file that you need to attach this time is a uh, 7.3 JS script. So I'm gonna right click on my uh, script subfolder and go new file, and then type out 7.3 JS, or uh, .js, there we go, .js, and then it should get in line with the other JavaScripts. Okay, so you should be looking at VS Code with three tabs, one of each type of file, or um, at least these two tabs, if you decided not to make a style sheet. Because um, remember, the style sheet is optional on 7.3. You should have at least a 7.3 JavaScript and an index 7.3.html. So with this assignment, going back to the HTML page, we're going to link the JavaScript inside of the brain instead of inside of the body, um, like we have been doing so far. So I'm going to put my script SRC. You want that second option. You could type it out the long way, but save yourself some time, be an efficient coder, and get that script SRC. And then inside of here, this is where we're going to attach our 7.3 JS. So start with the subfolder that it lives in, which is scripts, and then 7.3 JS right here. Scripts do not need content in between their start and end tags, even though all of the, um, uh, the other tags in the brain are void tags. They don't need an end. Script is not a void tag, but it does not need content in order for it to be functional. Kind of one of those outliers um, in that sense. If you chose to do a style sheet, this is where you'll do your Zelda link, L-I-N-K, and then hit enter. That's going to give you REL style sheet and high ref. Same process as the JavaScript subfolder, then file. And then after the file, you put type equals text slash CSS, the same way we've been doing it since unit uh, four, I think. I also, this is another optional part, the link and the version are both optional, but I like to put a version number in my uh, in my web pages and my files so that when I go back and update it, I can update a change log or I can just kind of tell what draft I'm on. Um, but to do that really quick, you just type V1 in the brain and then control question mark will quickly comment that out so that you have a V1 uh, looking like this. So I'm gonna leave this up for a second so you can check yours against mine. I'm gonna take attendance real quick. I'm pretty sure everybody's here. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Except Shreya's not here right now. Okay. So now we're going to make our way to the JavaScript file, the JS over here. And we're going to start leaving some notes before we do any type of um, any type of JavaScripting, because we want to label before we start doing um, our actual programming so we can figure out uh, what to come back to later. OK, so arrays, you might have heard that term in math. It functions pretty similarly in JavaScript. Arrays are a way to store a variety of numbers in a specific position in their sequential order. Now that might not make sense when I say it, but it'll make more sense when I type it out. So when you're doing uh, the first type of array called a number array, I want you to type out the word numbers and then comment that out, control question mark, and then hit enter, because this is where we're going to configure our number array. With, an, uh, with a number array, we've used the term VAR, if you remember back to early JavaScript, VAR to declare a variable. That's kind of an old way to do it that older computer systems like. Um, it works in the new age, but you know it's not. There's other ways to do it, which is what we're going to start with um, let instead here. So instead of typing variable to declare our uh, variable, we're going to type out let, 
and then give our an array a name, the same way that we give functions a name. You can see it's kind of the same colors. Let is that gene kind of denim blue, and numbers is kind of the name. Um, it doesn't have the parentheses, which would turn it into a function, but we're gonna say let numbers space equals space, and then a pair of square brackets, okay? Arrays require square brackets. So I'm gonna type that out as a note right here. Arrays require square brackets and always start at zero, which will make sense here in just a second. Yes. Uh, I haven't yet. That's what we're doing right now. Okay, so I'm gonna comment that out so that you have a note for that later on. Arrays always require square brackets and always start at zero. So to actually set our array, you can put whatever numbers you want in here, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna count from five down to zero. So not separated by spaces, no quotation marks needed, you only need commas. I'm gonna go five, four, three, two, one, zero. Kind of, oh, these are periods, I missed. Let's so make sure these are commas, not periods. Okay, so I've declared my array. I've told JavaScript that let numbers be this set of numbers down to zero. I have six numerals here, right? Because zero is technically a numeral in JavaScript. Um. And each of these numbers are in a specific position in this array. It's kind of like, it is kind of like lists in a little bit, in a, in a way. So what we'll do in order to call this array back, because remember JavaScript's basic process is giving the computer information is the first half, declaring your variables, creating your condition. The second half is executing something, running some type of program. We've done the first half, now we need to do the second half. So when you want to call back data from an array, that you've configured in whatever way you want to do it. I'm going to use console log for this uh, for this example. So console log parentheses. This is where you put the array name, and then inside of a pair of square brackets, still contained within the ignore that that's crossed out. That's just JavaScript helping me out. Uh, the array name, and inside of the square brackets, you put the array the position of the number that you're trying to call back. So what does that actually look like in our example here? Our array is called numbers because that's what we've declared it as. We've let numbers equal to this array. So in our console log, you type numbers and then square brackets. And inside of these square brackets, you put one of these positions on the numbers here. So the reason I say that arrays always start at zero is that the zeroth position is right here, this number five. And then it counts up however many variables or however many numerals you have in your total array. So this is zero, position zero, position one, position two, position three, position four, position five, right? If I counted the right, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. So whatever number I put in here is gonna reference the position in the array, not the actual variable as contained inside of the square brackets. So if I put array position number five, control S to save this, and then I go back to my index page and run it. If we check out the console. It's going to display the problem, uh, or it's going to display in my debug console the output of zero. So even though I said uh, log numbers five, I'm not literally logging the number five. I'm logging the fifth position in the array, which is actually zero. And you can see that in your um, your output by right clicking and going to in, uh, inspect, or yeah, it's usually called inspect down towards the bottom here. We're gonna find our way to the console. I'm uh, it decided to use edge. So it's usually this uh, this little box with the arrow on it. And you can see that zero is being logged in the console on line number four of our 7.3 JS file. This is a numeric array, very simply configured, functional, um, excuse me. Once you get out of the basics of JavaScript, um, arrays are really useful ways to keep all of your data in one spot and call it back when you need specific conditions met. Another type of array, I'm going to close my debug here so that I have the max amount of screen space. Another type of array is called a string. So you can type slash slash string, or you can type the word string and quick comment it out. But string arrays are storage data storage that is not just a hard numeric value. Like five is five. There's not really any debating that there. String lets you to be a little bit more uh, subjective and set things to different types of data. So we're gonna type let again, and then I'm gonna use fruits as an example. So let fruits or whatever you want your string array to be, 
you want to just copy mine, that's fine too. Equals space equals, and then a square bracket. Now inside of these square brackets, this is where we declare our string of variables. It's called a string because it goes in order, just like the numbers do, but they're not numbers, if that makes sense. So each variable that uh, I'm gonna assign to fruits, if you guys wanna give me some fruits, I will uh, put them in our array here. Bananas. Watermelon. Watermelon. Coconut. So I'm, you notice that I'm each of them is contained within a um, pair of quotation marks and separated by a comma. So I heard coconut, what else you guys got? What other fruits do you know of? <laughs> Mello. Mm -hmm. Mello. How, how do you spell that? Palmello? I've never heard of that one. Like that? Honestly, I have no idea. I don't think there's an L in the beginning, but. We'll call it Pomelo. Okay. That's fine. It's a data store. It's a data type. Hmm? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, right. I'm going to add peaches because those are my favorite. Right? Okay. These can be whatever you want. Avocado. As long as the string. I don't know if avocado's a fruit. Um. As long as the string variables are separated by both quotation marks and commas, it will be stored as data inside of your array. Now, the positioning is exactly the same as the numbers. Bananas are in position zero. Watermelon's in position one, two, three, four total for this one. Let's do five on the other one as well. Give me, we'll go cherries was one in, a popular one in the other classes. Okay, and cherries. I'm going to close my explorer so you can see my whole, um, my whole string here. Okay, so... We're going to do some more console logs. And then in the parentheses here, you could go array name and then array position. So you would go fruits, uh, square bracket, position zero, which will give me bananas. Or you could do it all. Uh, you could do it line by line like this if you wanted to log every single one of the, um, every single one of them in its own console log. But you could also just type the array position or the array name and the array position, fruits, square bracket one, comma, fruits, square bracket two, et cetera, up until it's all contained within a uh, within the log here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six options. <clears throat> so I'm gonna log those out real quick. So fruits three, just declaring the array and then declaring the position or calling the array and saying what specific position I want to reference. Fruits four, fruits five. Okay, cool. So now I have console logged all of my fruits in this string. And I can mess with this order here. Say I want a uh, position three here. So that means this makes this position one. And I want this to be position five, which makes this position two. We'll leave, uh, let's take four. Oops, kidding, I put, put four up here in zero. You can mix up the uh, position that you call it back, and it's just going to take it out of whatever order you've stored here. So if I go back to my index page and I run this, nothing on the actual display, but if I right click and inspect, it's going to log, and I go to the console, of course, it's going to log all of those um, specific positions in a single line because it's one single console log, but it's going to put them in the, uh, the order that I set. So if I, yeah, let me split my screen. Okay, go back to my JavaScript. All of this is in one console log. So fruit number three, five, one, zero, and two is gonna happen in this order. If you wanna separate them, you have to do a new console log. So let's take fruits two out of here. Control X and then hit enter. I'm gonna do a new console.log, curly bracket, control V, or not curly bracket, sorry, parentheses. Refresh that, refresh that. It's going to take coconut out of that original string console and put it down here in the new one from line 10. Remember, the console is going to tell you what line that the JavaScript is being executed off of. So zero is on line four here. That's our console log of numbers. All right. This is line nine. So it's breaking down that console log. If you're finding things that um, you're not sure where they're happening, check the position, kind of like the bookmark on the... Um, on the uh, inspector here on the console. So these are the basics of arrays. You can see that it's a way to store multiple different types of data. Well, it's one type of data, but the same. Um, you can store multiple variables in one specific spot, in one specific name that you can call back with more ease um, later on. So another way that you can use arrays, the typical use case of um, setting an array is something called a loop. So a loop is a function that is going to behave 
until its conditions are met, and then it's going to stop. So what we're going to do here is give it an array to work with that once it runs out of information, it's going to stop running. So what we need to do before we do anything like that is uh, leave a comment for ourselves in the future. Loop array for numbers is what we're going to configure right now. I like that. Control question mark. All right. So we need to set our variables before we declare them, before we do any type of um, functioning yet. So we're going to go let numbers equal, and I'm going to count up from 0 to 10 this time. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. But you can see JavaScript's kind of mad at me. It's turned red. It's gone evil, or eviler than it already is. You cannot have two of the same lets be true at the same time. So we already have let numbers equal to these five digits. We cannot reset numbers equal to a new set of 10 digits later on like you can in CSS. So like with CSS, if this because this is the newer, uh, newer, quote unquote, the most recent addition to our code, it should overwrite the previous. JavaScript does not work like that. You have to have unique variables or unique names for your, um, for your functions and for your loops. Otherwise, it will not work. So what we're going to do is we're going to change numbers on line number 13 for me to numbers. So you can have a 0 or a 1. I mean, not a 1, um, a, an O, the letter O. You can also make them do like capital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can change the, ca the capitalization as well. But I like numbers because it looks very different from numbers. So then I'm going to go to my comment on line 12 and change the u to a, a zero so that it matches. So here's our loop array for numbers. OK, so we've set numbers to equal 0 to 10. What we're going to do now is create something called a for loop. For loops have a specific type of um, or a specific set of variables and conditions that go inside of them. And I want you guys just to copy this for now, and I'll explain it so that it makes more sense later on if you're watching uh, tutorials or reading reading tutorials. I forgot. I guess they're called the same thing. Anyway, sorry. So inside of our parentheses, after you write the word for, you're going to write let equal or space i equals uh, 0, like this. So let i equal to 0. We're setting another variable that's contingent upon this loop, or dependent upon this loop, I mean. Separate that with a semicolon and then a space. Then we're going to set i to less than the length of numbers. So we're going to go name of the array, numbers.length. The dot length property, when you add it to an array, is going to find out how many variables there are in the array, not necessarily their sum or what they actually are, but just how many spaces there are um, inside, of the, inside of the declared loop. And then what we do next is take i and add 1 to it by adding this plus plus. You can hit tab and leave a label that's called code to execute for each iteration. So that word uh, iteration, each, means um, like round or attempt. So I'm going to control question mark that. Notice in JavaScript, you can nest your, co you can, uh, nest your comments at different layers or different levels. Can't do that in HTML and CSS. So you can move your, co uh, your comments around so that they make more sense to uh, more specific spots um, in the page here. All right, so now the code to actually execute each of these iterations, to actually run this loop until it becomes false, is just another console.log. And then we're going to set the variable, or the, um, the array, which in my case is numbers, in here to the value of i. So now what we're doing, we're getting into some algebraic expressions here with variables and stuff like that. I'll break down what the computer is interpreting what we've just told it to do. So we've given it the information that the variable of numbers is these numbers in these positions. So the zeroth position, first, second, third, all the way up to 10, right? Now it's going to run a loop based on the information that we've given it. And we have i equal to 0. So when i is less than the length of numbers, which would be up to 10, add one number to i. So what it goes here is going to count up from 0 up to the max length of the array, which is 10. And it's going to log those based on the numbers array and the variable of i. 
So if it doesn't make sense to you, don't worry. It barely makes sense to me. Okay. So wait, good. Yeah. Can I like try to explain? Yeah, absolutely. So like um wait. I look into computer. Okay, so it starts from zero. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I have the index, right? Um, mm -hmm. so I start with zero, and it ends when it's like the length is like it extends for the length of like the whole list. Yes. And like so, I start with zero, so it starts with the first digit of the array, mm -hmm. and then like and I I adds one unto itself and like jumps to the next index like next next index number correct and it reaches the end yes until it runs out of length yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so the way it works first thing set the variable mm -hmm. when you first run the, the the group it runs the first thing so that runs um, i yeah the middle is a boolean that as long looks as it, through yeah as long as it is uh true it will run and the last thing every single time you run the loop it'll run that code yeah, it doesn't have to be i plus plus. It could be i plus q. Yeah, whatever. It can yeah. be whatever second variable you want here. Cool. And then it just logs that function that we've created here. Tom, you had your hand up. No, go ahead. Okay, so this is really fascinating code. That when we run it, it's going to do something you've never seen before, which is count up from zero to ten. Hooray! We've got zero to ten. Our function is functional. Our array has been called. Our variables stored. And that's really all you need for 7.3. So what you can do is you can add, um, if we go back real quick to the fruits array, we can add another console.log. That's going to demonstrate that length uh, function. Console.log, and then a parentheses and some quotes. Anytime you have quotes inside of a console log, it means it's going to make text appear, like legible text uh, for your user or for your developer. So we're going to say the length of the fruits array is and then a semicolon because javascript's not going to interpret this space as a space that we use when writing so you need a semicolon to create a little bit of distance between those two things and now after you finish the quotes you write the name of the array and then the function dot length not the function but the oh my goodness why is it mad at fruits it should the wait this worked before yeah you need a clock like, like that yeah, yeah they're it's gonna oh, okay it's gonna add okay weird it didn't need that last time all right so let's run this or refresh it because i'm already running and go back to edge and it's gonna say right here the length of the fruits array is six why is it there's still no space why is it okay so we actually we gotta add the space uh before the quotes in order for them to appear um inside of the inspector like we're used to. The length of the fruits array is six. It's a pretty basic breakdown. There's not a lot of like functionality that we can call upon this yet. It's just important to know how to set these up and use them later on, because as you get deeper and deeper into JavaScript, it's dependent on storing a lot of different data types and a lot of different variables all in one spot. And you call them based on specific um, conditions or specific things that you're trying to do. But if you're just focused on getting what I'm asking for for the assignment, this is what your JavaScript should look like. Okay? Does this make sense? Even a little bit. I was never very good at math, so this is this is a struggle for me, to be honest. <laughs> Programming is quite a bit different from HTML and CSS because those things are static. Right, they don't ha need dependencies in the sense that they need variables. Things are actually happening. Those are just recipes. This is actually instructions. There's a weird little difference, but if you're feeling stressed out by JavaScript, uh, don't please because this is the last thing that we're doing uh, officially as a class before we get into final time. I need to develop my JavaScript skills a little bit more. Okay, does anybody have any questions before I check your seven point threes? Are we good here? Your index should just look like this. It should have nothing in the body. I mean, unless you really want to put something there because everything's contained within the console. So you don't need to uh, You don't need to have anything in the body. All right, if we're all good, I'm going to wrap up the Zoom. I'll check these for about five minutes and then I'll uh, talk to you guys. Oh, there was another thing I wanted to show you. Um, 
I need to add it to your agenda for this week, but let me pull up second periods as an example. Give me just a second. And then just we'll just do a couple little housekeeping things before we get into um, final time. Okay, so if we go to second period, I've added a couple uh, links here for JavaScript games and challenges that are gonna be a lot more fun to practice than doing stuff like this, right? Things that are a little bit boring, but strictly functional. Um, those JavaScript games and challenges sometimes do not have the best uh, tutorials or the best walkthroughs on them, but they are a way to see these JavaScript functions in action. Um, let's look at Code Combat, for example. What you do with Code Combat is you just do I'm a student and then you click play now. We don't have a class code or anything. I'm gonna mute this because it makes noise. Um, this is like a dungeon crawler that attempts to teach you JavaScript and it's uh will let you how yeah, excuse me, let you practice JavaScript with stuff like variables, forms, and functions, and it's gonna get more intense the uh the more you progress through. So I already have started, so it'll ask you to like equip some stuff or whatever. Okay, it's gonna load in. Your goals are to avoid the spikes and to collect the gem. So guide your hero by writing a program with code. When you click on start level, because I've already written some, um, it's gonna have little tool tips. If you hover over your options here, like if I click move down, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna break down how you move your hero down. So in this case, the parameters are gonna be steps the, and then the number and then how many steps are going to be taken, right? So if I click on, how to, okay, so that's move right. If I hit enter and then I type, if I hover over this hero dot move down and then a step count. So hero dot move down. And then I need to count, let's see, that's probably two steps. Okay, and let's run that. Okay, and then we're just gonna go hero dot move right, and I'll attach these to your guys' agenda here. Programming language Python. Hmm. It's just programming language Python. Does it? Yeah. Where? Right. Oh. Well, this is supposed to be JavaScript. What? I mean, that's where also working top them. Yes. Python and JavaScript are really similar. Okay, yes, so it's just working through you through the basic syntax and uh, stuff we've been practicing, um, and it's a little bit more fun than listening to me talk about our base. Um, there's also a couple other options like Code Wars and Leaked Code, which I'll attach here in a second. JavaScript.info is not um, a game necessarily, but it is a super helpful reference document for how to break down JavaScript into its kind of key components and how you can improve um, your skills through there. We got objects, data types, functions, properties, configurations. This is all just really useful tools uh, to have on your um, in your back pocket for. Yeah. Anyway, so let me attach this for you guys because this is really only on second periods currently. Um, and then tomorrow we will. So we have ten minutes left here. Tomorrow we're going to talk about making a GitHub account if you don't already have one. Um, it's really simple, but. It's important for hosting your sites. And then we're going to start talking about what I'm uh, asking of your final. So I'm giving you guys lots of time to work on your final all of next week and then all of finals week. So there will be no excuses for not finishing your final because you will have plenty of time and plenty of help from me because I don't like tests. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up real quick.